Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, what's up? My name's Alyssa. <laughs> if you don't know, I am a nurse. I currently work in the operating room, but I did spend some time on the floor in a med surge IMC unit most of which I worked night shift, which is why I'm making today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my nighttime routine as well as my tried and true tips on how to hopefully not just survive night shift, but hopefully make it doable. Today's video is going to be sponsored by Home Chef. If you guys have been watching for a while, you guys already know how much I love Home Chef, but we will be getting into that a little bit later in the video. Can you guys hear my dog in the background? Penny, do you mind? Yeah, I'm trying to film a video. Quit rolling around and jingling. Shh, shh. Also make sure that you're following me on Instagram. I post tons of stuff on Instagram. I actually post there much more than I post on YouTube just because I work a full-time job and it is a little bit easier to share things via Instagram. So you guys can follow me over there if you're interested in what I'm doing most of the time. The first thing that I wanna talk about is my night shift routine, uh, basically the first day of a stretch. So I had a couple days off and then I'm hopping back on the night shift train that's going to be the first thing that I talk about. So typically what I would do is I would get a good night of sleep the night before and I would get up early and then I would spend some time with my kids, take my youngest daughter to school. My husband and I are a really great team so he would take my oldest to school and I would take the youngest to school. And then believe it or not, this would be my, my most productive day of the week. So after I dropped my daughter off, I would make a to-do list, try to get as much stuff as I possibly could do. A lot of the times that is YouTube stuff, uh, whether it's editing, filming, uh, cleaning my house, things like that. So I would pretty much do that up until about noon and then I would eat lunch, maybe take a little bit of time to myself and then I would basically do a shortened nighttime routine even though it's the middle of the day but I would set out my clothes for work, I would set out my scrubs, compression socks and also like an under scrub. I'll link all of, all of these things down below. If I mention anything in this video, it will be linked down below because I get so many questions on the stuff that I mention in videos. So I'd lay that stuff out. I'd also lay out my workout clothes and then make sure that my lunch was packed so I could go to sleep, wake up at 4 p.m., drag my booty out of bed. I, I swear I have a farm. Come here, Frank wants to sleep. Whoa, buddy wants to say hi. All right, lay down. And then I have the dog down here, which you guys can't see. Okay, you gotta be quiet though. Shh. At four o'clock, I drag my booty out of bed and I would go work out. I have a treadmill in the basement and I also have some weights and things like that. I would spend an hour working out and then around five o'clock when my husband would come home with the kids and then I would shower quick and spend a little bit of time with my family, eating dinner and things like that. So that's kind of what I did and then I would pretty much leave at 6.20, 6.30 ish to make it in time to get to work by seven and that's pretty much when I began my shift. I worked 7 p.m. until about 8 a.m. That's pretty much what my schedule was like. When I was in a stretch of nights, if I was lucky enough to not have them all split up, which happened more than I would like to admit, which really stunk, I would basically come home from work, eat something quick, and maybe lay my stuff out and then go right to bed. That's just pretty much what I did. My goal was always to be in bed by 9 a.m. Then I would get up at 4 p.m. and I would basically do from 4 p.m. on like I did the rest of the days. So uh, it was really important for me to work out. So that's kind of how my night shift flow went. It's really hard when you work 12s. Pretty much your whole life is consumed by work, especially if you're on night shift. And it's even worse when you have days off in between your shifts on because it just really throws you through a loop. So if you are in that, I understand. I've been there. It's brutal, but you've got this. I'm gonna put a poll in the eye in the sky. Let me know if you guys work night shift or day shift. Uh, you can, it doesn't matter if you're a nurse. I'm just kind of curious. Now I would like to share with you guys my tried and true tips to basically make this survivable and hopefully more than survivable and livable. So the first thing that I did is basically exactly what you guys are doing right now. I researched the heck out of night shift tips. It's actually how I found my friend, Nurse Liz, and we're basically internet besties now. Check out Nurse Liz if you haven't checked her out before. When I got on nights, I asked all of my coworkers trying to figure out what their routine was and then I basically tried a bunch of their routines. That's basically how I came upon my own routine is just trying different things. For flipping back to a more normal schedule after your uh, stretch of work days, this is something that is also highly personal. Something that a lot of my coworkers did was short sleep. So basically they would get home, 
maybe sleep from nine until noon or one and then they would be up for the day and then go to sleep that night. I tried to do that. Sometimes I was sometimes I was successful, sometimes I wasn't. What ultimately ended up working for me was basically sleeping all day until five and then I would be so tired. I, was, I would have to force myself to stay up until 11 p.m. Then I would sleep from 11 p.m. till about four or five a.m. and then I would be flipped, if that makes sense. That's just kind of what worked for me. That's a lot of sleep, but like I said, I tried the short sleep thing. It just, it didn't work for me. I would feel like crap not only that day, but the following day as well. At least if I slept the whole day that day, I got to spend a few really good feeling hours with my family. So like I said, you're just gonna have to figure out what kind of works for you. You're gonna have to, you're just gonna have to mix it up and see what works. The next thing that I am going to recommend is a set of these bad boys. And these are my blackout curtains. As you can see, they're very sexy. The white things hanging over the top, those are the curtains that I took off of the windows to put the blackout curtains on, but it wasn't dark enough. And I tried to find something that looked a little bit better, couldn't find anything. So I just decided to use the curtains that I had. I'm not trying to impress anybody when I'm trying to go to sleep. I'm trying to sleep. They did have like cuter colors, but I just, I wanted it dark. I also have like faux wood, uh, blinds in my bedroom so I had really thick blinds and then I put the curtains on top of it and it was like almost the sun was setting that's about how much sunlight I had in my room as if, as if the sun was setting or a super dark overcast day it was like the number one thing that really helped me sleep during the day the next thing that was really important to me when I worked nights is meal prepping my biggest meal I guess my biggest meal prep tips that I'll give you is what I would do is I would make a big batch of some sort of grain typically rice or quinoa and then a protein which is either beans or tofu and then some veggies and I would throw it together with a little bit of like teriyaki sauce or even soy sauce and that was kind of my meal. My super duper lazy pro tip is meal prepping some rice or even buying individual like rice cups and then a can of soup. You add some rice and a can of soup and you have yourself a meal and it's kind of healthy and it takes like two seconds to do so that was kind of my my go-to when I was like real short on time if I had a little bit more time or I was prepared a little bit more I would get home chef as you guys know home chef is sponsoring this video if you guys don't know home chef is a meal delivery service so you go online create an account and if you have 18 different weekly options to choose from and they change every single week there are so many to choose from you can see it like a month out in advance so you can like plan ahead I'm vegan so a lot of times I kind of see you know when they have vegan options for me and it was just so helpful for it to just show up to my door I've used home chef for the, over the past year and it's super helpful for me especially when I'm so busy because finding the time to meal prep especially meal plan Meal prepping isn't so bad, but it's like meal planning and then going grocery shopping and then and I ended up wasting so much food. So if I was just burnt out or I knew I was gonna have a crazy week, I would order home chef meals, I would make them all at once and then I would use that as my meal prep. It came right to my door and they were so easy that Charlie could make them and then I wouldn't have to worry about that either. Because when I was on nights, we did so much teamwork. Speaking of dinner, supposed to, it's my alarm to start making dinner. Most of the meals take 30 minutes or less. It'll actually tell you when you're kind of sifting through the meals, how long it'll take you. It's super easy. It has instructions literally with pictures. It can't get any easier than that, for real. It's awesome. And I also, I know I say this in like every single video I do with Home Chef, I save the meal, the recipe cards, and then I make them even like after I get the Home Chef meal, if that makes sense. Like if it's one that I really, really like, the, the instruction cards have all the ingredients and the instructions, so it's been my favorite way to find new things to eat. But if you guys haven't tried Home Chef, you definitely have to. You can use my code alyssa 80 free to get $80 off your first four boxes, so it's $20 each box. Another great thing about Home Chef is you don't have to do it every single week. You can get one this week. You can do it in two months from now. And this code works for whether you get one this week, in the next three weeks, or if you split them up over six months, you can still get that money off, which is super nice. Thank you again, Home Chef, for sponsoring this video. Y'all are the best. My next tip is to have some sort of sound machine. We use what I call the Google machine. I don't know what it's actually called, but we use the Google machine thingy. Okay, Google, play the sound of rain. And she plays the sound of rain. Alexa also does the same thing. She probably can hear me in the other room. Yes, we have an Alexa 
So you can either use a sound machine or get one of these fancy nosy machines that listen to you while you talk and go about your life, which is a little creepy. There are numerous options. It's nice to kind of drown out a little bit of traffic sound. When my family was home on the weekends, it was a little bit more difficult and I wore earplugs. That's basically what I would do to kind of drown out a little bit of sound because it's difficult. Uh, when you when you're working at night the next tip isn't really a tip But put your phone on do not disturb unless you're on call You don't need to know what's going on if you have an iPhone you can put people in your favorites So even when your phone's on do not disturb it will ring through to you So I basically just have my husband on there My next tip is to basically have a nighttime routine I don't care if you work days or you work nights You need to have some sort of nighttime routine that will kind of let your body know all right homie It's time to go to sleep so for me, that's something like washing my face, laying out my stuff at night, and then reading a book or watching a YouTube video or a TV show, an episode, whatever. My next tip is something that I have been shouting from the rooftops for probably the past year or so, and that is making time for exercise. Exercise is so important, not only for stress relief, but also for sleeping. I, like I told you guys, I wake up and I work out before I go to work. I still do that now that I'm on day shift, and I don't know what it is, but it helps you get better sleep. I know we're worn out, we're nurses, we're exhausted without working out, but it gives me a boost of energy before I go to work, reduces my stress, and then I sleep so much deeper. I don't know why, I just do. If you guys want me to make a video on how to get into working out, let me know and I will do that for you guys. This last year has probably been the most consistent I've ever been with working out, and I'm so much happier because of it. <laughs> Next up is caffeine. I know a lot of people drink energy drinks and that works for them. I mean, if, if that's you, you do you boo, but for me, I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine, especially as I age. And basically what my caffeine routine was is when I get up, I would have a little bit of like a pre-workout, which is really very natural. It's like a green tea type of supplement uh, by the company Vega. And I would have that before my workout. Then when I would get to work, I would have a cup, one cup of regular coffee to kind of sip while I was taking report. Then I would have a cup of half-calf around midnight. And then I would have on another cup of half-calf around 3 a.m. And 3 a.m. is typically when I try to cut off my caffeine. The caffeine kind of gives you that little bit of boost through that last log. And then hopefully I can sleep relatively okay the rest of the day. Next up is if you're really, really struggling, you're at work, it's three o'clock in the morning and you're afraid to blink because you're afraid your eyelids will not come back up. You know what I'm saying? When this happens, you need to get up. You need to either walk around and do your charting while you're walking if you have like the computers on wheels or you need to do like take a jog up and down the stairs go talk to a coworker, but you need to get moving, that's it and that's all. My next tip is not necessarily going to work for those of you that have kids. Maybe it will, maybe it not, but it's worth mentioning anyways. This isn't something I did, but you could try to keep your entire life on night shift mode. Some people do that and it works great for them, but obviously I have kids and a husband that I wanna see during the day, so it's just not practical for me to kind of stay on that schedule all the time. My next tip is to use melatonin, but sparingly. For me, what I would do is if I laid in bed for more than 20 or 30 minutes, then I would take a melatonin supplement, especially in the beginning of my stretch when it was a little bit harder to fall asleep. Otherwise, I really try to stay away from any kind of like sleep aids. You can use Benadryl. I know a lot of coworkers that did use Benadryl. I just wouldn't get in the routine of really depending on anything to get you to sleep because I just don't think it's a good idea. That's just me personally. Obviously, y'all are adults here. Y'all can make your own choice, but that's just my two cents. And lastly, it took me a good four months to kind of get used to night shift. Some people never do adjust, and it just is what it is, but just try to be patient with the process. I was miserable the first three months, and then that fourth month, I was really kind of starting to get into a little bit more of a livable routine and able to manage it a little bit better. My body was a little bit more used to it. So just try to be patient. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give Home Chef a try. If you haven't, give yourself that break. I promise it is worth it. I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.